Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a green-white plus one plus one counter synergy deck, which got a ton of new additions with Zendikar Rising. First off, let's take a look at some of the payoff cards for playing all these plus one plus one counter cards, and that discussion needs to start with Conclave Mentor, a two mana two two center cleric at uncommon, saying if one or more plus one counters would be put on a creature we control, that many plus one are put on that creature instead and when the Mentor dies we also gain life equal to its power, so the Mentor definitely rewards us for playing a lot of effects that incrementally put plus one counters on our creatures, so especially if an effect only puts one counter on a creature, then the Mentor is especially powerful, since in that case we're essentially doubling the amount of counters we put on that creature instead, so the Mentor is definitely one of the most powerful payoffs in the deck. Then we also have the full play set of Wildwood Scourge, X and a green for a Hydra, that's a 0-0, but it enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and whenever one or more plus 1 counters are put on another non-Hydra creature we control, we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Wildwood Scourge, so once again this rewards us for incrementally placing counters on our creatures, and will also grow very large very quickly. And then another new payoff card is the Oran Reef Ooze, a 3 mana 2-2 two, two rare from Zendikar Rising, saying when the Ooze enters the battlefield we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on targeted creature we control, potentially the Ooze itself, and whenever the Ooze attacks we can put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each attacking creature with a plus 1 counter on it already, so this will very quickly get out of hand, considering that most creatures in the deck already have a plus 1 plus 1 counter on them. And then taking a look at some of the other new additions from Zendikar Rising. At 1 mana we've got the full playset of Swarm Shambler, 1 mana for a 0-0 Fungus Beast at rare, that enters the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, and whenever a creature we control with a plus 1 counter on it becomes the target of a spell an opponent controls, we get to make a 1-1 one -one green insect creature token, so if they try to kill our creatures with spot removal at least we'll get some tokens in return. And for 1 mana we can tap Swarm Shambler and put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, so once again this is a nice incremental way of placing counters on our creatures, which works very well with the Conclave Mentor and Wildwood Scourge. Then we also have two copies of Vastwood Fortification, which is one of those new dual-faced cards that we can also play as a tap land, and when building the mana base I view this as about half a land, as I expect to play the one mana instant, putting a plus one plus one counter on a creature we control about half the time, so the two copies of Fortification add up to about one land total. And then we also have the full play set of Stone Coil Serpent, which we can play for one mana, so the flexibility here is what makes this card so powerful, as a 0-0 with a reach and trample and protection from multicolored, and enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it, so can also play it as a nice expensive creature in the late game if we're in top deck mode. And then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Luminarch Aspirant, a 1-1 one -one that at the beginning of combat on our turn puts a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control, so it essentially starts out as a 2-2 two -two and will just keep on placing more counters on the entire team, and once again this is a nice incremental way of placing counters on our creatures, which works well with our Mentor, Scourge, and of course also a nice one with Ooze as it will ensure that every creature has a plus one plus one counter on it. And then our removal spell of choice in the deck is Inscription of Abundance, 2 mana for an instant at rare, and it also has Kicker for 2 and a green, and then we get to choose one, but if we kicked it we get to choose any number instead, between putting 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature, target player gains X life where X is the greatest power among creatures they control, and target creature we control fights target creature we don't control, so a very flexible removal spell that we can also use as a pump spell. And then we've got three copies of Scavenging Ooze, the 2 mana 2-2, two -two, that for a single green can exile a card from a graveyard, and if it was a creature card we can put a plus one plus one counter on the Ooze, and we also gain one life, so this is excellent in any grindy matchups where plenty of creatures end up dying, as we'll eventually end up with a giant Scavenging Ooze, great against any decks trying to mill us, since we can exile our own creatures to grow the Ooze, potentially reduce the cards in our graveyard, and we can also exile opposing Uros, so they can be escaped, so the Ooze is definitely well positioned in the mana game right now, and then Inscription of Abundance giving us a removal spell also guarantees that there's more food in the graveyard for Scavenging Ooze. Then at 3 mana we've got our Oran Reef Ooze, 
we've got a Wildwood Scourge, which of course we can play at any spot in our curve. And then at 4 mana we've got 2 copies of Bastry's Lieutenant, 4 mana for a 3-4 Human Knight, with Vigilance and Protection from Multicolored, and when a Lieutenant enters the battlefield we can put a plus one plus one counter on target creature we control, and when a Lieutenant or another creature we control dies, if it had a plus one plus one counter on it, we get to make a 2-2 White Knight creature token with Vigilance, so this can give us some sweeper insurance, which can otherwise be pretty backbreaking for a deck like this. And then finally we've got two copies of the Great Henge, a 9 mana for a legendary artifact that costs X less to cast, where X is the greatest power among creatures we control, and especially a card like Wildwood Scourge can get very big very quickly, reducing the cost of the Great Henge to potentially just double green, and then we can tap the Great Henge to add double green to our mana pool, and we also gain two life, and whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under our control, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it, and we get to draw a card, so also great synergy with our various plus one plus one counter effects. And then we've got two copies of Turn Timber Symbiosis, another one of those dual-faced cards that we can play as a land, and we will be playing this as a land more often than not, which comes into play untapped at the cost of 3 life, but then every now and then if we're flooding out, for 7 mana we can cast the Sorcery, which lets us take a look at the top 7 cards of our library, we can put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield, and if that card has converted mana cost 3 or less, it enters the battlefield with 3 additional plus one plus one counters on it, and the rest goes on the bottom, so also has a bit of synergy in the deck. Then we've got two Vastwood Fortification, two Temple of Plenty which comes into play tapped and lets us cry one, seven Forests, eight Plains and four Branch Loft Pathway, which we can also play as a Boulder Loft Pathway instead. So that's our deck, now let's jump into the games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Yurion Sky Nomad, and yeah, we've got a Keeper here. So what do we play on turn two? Probably the Illuminarch Aspirant, the sooner we play it, the more advantage we can get with it, although playing the Scourge also plays nicely with the turn 3 Ooze, as it will pick up a counter right away. Ooze is typically a card we want to play later, once there's some food in the graveyard, and then we'll probably be playing this as a green pathway, so we have more green mana for Ooze. Opponent with a Sultai Triome, and uh, yeah, I think I'll just play the Aspirant for now. Gotta make sure to play this in our first main phase, so it picks up a counter. Opponent on four colors, no red. And Bloodsheaf's Thirst takes out our Aspirant, sadly. Alright, let's play our Ooze. Put the counter on itself. There's Uro, so the Ooze rejoices. Put Swamp in play. Luckily they can't kill it with the Thirst here. Ooh, Conclave Mentor is a nice draw. So how about we play the Conclave Mentor, attack with Ooze. And then I'm probably just playing this tapped so we have access to 4 mana next turn. And then the Aspirant can potentially put a counter on the Mentor. A kicked Thirst kills the Ooze sadly. Alright, so I think I'm playing Scourge as a 1-1 here. They're not close to escaping Uro yet. And then play Aspirant, putting counter on Mentor. There's also an argument for putting the counter on the Aspirant itself to kind of spread out the uh, goodness here. Since Mentor is quite valuable even without a counter on it. Opponent cycles a Waker of Waves. So more food for the Scavenging Ooze. And then we gotta hope our opponent doesn't have a Sweeper here. If they kill the Scourge, then something like Extinction Event would be even more painful, because this is an odd mana cost creature, whereas the two other ones are even, and so is the Ooze. So if they kill anything, we're hoping it's not the Scourge. 
It's gonna be Thurs killing the Mentor. Alright, so now I'm less concerned about a potential extinction event. Gotta make sure to keep as much green mana untapped as possible. And then probably don't want Shambler at this point. And then we want to exile stuff right now. So the Scourge also picks up additional counters. And Waker Waves can go. And then the Aspirant will put a counter on itself. Since the Scourge is big enough already. Alright, let's see what they've got. Confounding Conundrum draws a card. Also has good synergy with Yorion, as they get to draw another card when they flicker it. Four mana. Neutralize Cycles. Their opponent's digging here. They seem pretty desperate. Cycles Waker of Waves, so I think they're just dead on board now. Alright, so we managed to find through quite a bit of removal here. Opponent had some nice early answers, but it just wasn't enough, even with Triple Thirst. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with pretty nice looking hands. Turn one Shambler. Turn two. I've got a lot of options. Can just play 2 2 Stone Coil, can grow the Shambler. I guess now I'm kind of into playing this tapped and just activating the Swarm Shambler. And then we can play 4 4 Stone Coil on turn 4. Facing Birth, so could be a Shadow the Sky deck, which we don't love to see. Another birth. Scavenging ooze at least will grow if there is a sweeper in our future. So what's my plan here? Yeah, I don't know if I want to commit more to the board here. I guess I just attack with both and then I can pass with inscription available. Could also use my inscription to pump whatever creature they try and block here. Is that worth it? I mean, it's not like I'm going to be killing a creature if they're a white control deck. Although it could be a white life gain deck, in which case this could still be useful. And then I probably don't need more white mana, but I might want more green for ooze. It's going to be a Solemn Simulacrum instead. Sure. I don't really see a reason to kill it. I mean, I'm happy if they chump. Scourge. I guess I can play a Scourge. And then we'll still have some leftovers. And it does kind of force the issue on the sweeper if they have it. If they're not jumping with a wall, that probably means they don't have a sweeper. They did jump, but they had to think about it, so who knows. Gonna be another solemn. But it keeps on ramping. And a maze mine too. Another inscription. So now I maybe am okay with using inscription to kill a blocker just to push more damage. Like, I don't think we have enough to kill my opponent, do we? 
Although I guess we might. Hold on a second. This gets two counters. So this is 14-19. Alright, never mind. I guess they're just dead. Can fight twice. Had to go into full control to make sure I could still fight before blockers. All right, and there we go. And 19 damage. While we were playing around Shadow Sky as best we could. Opponent gets this cry before they take lethal. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with uh, decent looking hands. Could use some two and three mana creatures to follow up Shambler, but if we don't, it's still a nice mana sink. Opponent fetches an island. Blue black and a Merfolk, a Wind Robber, so the rogue stack. So probably want to keep Inscription for the more important rogues. And for now we're just going to put a counter on Shambler. The opponent milling us could be beneficial if we eventually find Scavenging Ooze. And pretty happy that the second Henge got milled. So they probably have the 1-3 Flash Flyer here. Which, if they try and block my Shambler, I could punish in a number of ways. So I don't actually hate attacking with both even. Although I don't have a great play if they don't try and block. So maybe I shouldn't bother here and just uh, play this tapped and double pump. Yeah, because if my opponent just takes it, my turn is pretty weak. All right, they had an Enforcer instead. Mills me for two. Three cards in Graveyard. And the Shamblers are also a good way to get the Henge in play if we keep on growing them. Opponent seems to be stuck on two. All right, so probably a decent turn for Bansari's lieutenants. If they have a brazen borrower to bounce one of my creatures, I would rather put the counter on one of the shamblers. I think. So if they bounce lieutenant and I put the counter on the lieutenant itself, I don't really get any advantage from it. Although, I also want to try and work up towards this Great Henge. So maybe I do just pass the turn here. If they flash into 1-3, I can kill it with Abundance, and then we still get to grow the Shamblers. And then next turn I can play Henge for 5. It's going to be another Enforcer instead. Do I need to kill one of the Enforcers now? Maybe. Before... They gain Death Touch here. So this fights this. Up to seven cards. So next turn it can attack, mill me for one. And then this will have Death Touch. Third land at the cost of three life. It's going to be a mind carver, which will pump for three here. As soon as they deal damage to me. Th 
they could have a drown in the lock in hand, but this has converted mana cost 9, so that's not counterable at the moment, so... Yeah, let's play Henge. That resolves, and then we'll just pass. End of turn we can grow both Shamblers. Opponent once again didn't use their two mana. Not sure what they're keeping up. And I could cast Symbiosis next turn. Are they going to try and sneak in their legendary creature here? Yep, Zareth. So I could fight with my Shambler, although it would result in both creatures dying. But it's probably worth it here. So, let's have a bit of a fight. And there goes my ooze. Alright, I think I want to go Scourge into Lieutenant this turn. So I can play a Scourge for X equals 2. And then I can still grow the Shambler too. And then, I guess I'll put counter on Shambler here, since the Lieutenant gets a counter from the Henge anyway. Alright, so our board is developing nicely. Protection from Multicolored means it can be targeted by Drown in the Lock. It's gonna be a Rankle instead. Alright. Rankle's pretty good here. They can sacrifice a Wind Robber. Probably take three from Enforcer since I don't want to lose two creatures here. Uh, activate this and then sacrifice Shambler. Although if they sacrifice Robber, they are potentially taking a ton of damage on the way back. Still get a 2-2 two -two token. Alright, they sacrifice the Enforcer instead to keep a blocker back. Playing it safe. Well. Seeing the power of Great Henge here. Put a counter on the knight token. If you're wondering why I get two of these mentor triggers that I have to select, it's because I have auto choose replacement effects turned off in the settings. It's not relevant for this deck, but it used to be relevant for the historic version of the plus one counter deck, where you wanted to make sure to get the plus one counter from mentor before doubling it with branching evolution, otherwise you missed out on some plus one plus one counters, just as a side note. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice looking hand. Turn one Shambler, turn two Aspirants. Inscription for removal. And given that we're on the play, we can even kill a Lotus Cobra without losing a creature in the fight. I think I put the counter on Shambler this turn. Opponent on red-green stomps the Shambler, but we get a 1-1 token in return. Do I put the counter on the token? I think I should still put it on the ooze now, so that it doesn't die to another stomp.
could use a bit more green mana for scavenging ooze here, but that's alright. Innkeepers or point on team or adventures. And a fail wishes just as a one for a blocker. Another plane's not a great draw. So we've got a few options. I could also inscription put two counters on the insect attack with everyone. That wouldn't be bad. Or I can shut off the card draw from innkeeper by fighting. Aspirin probably just puts counter on itself, so both of my creatures can attack past uh, Fae of Wishes. And we'll see what happens. Put on Chumps 1. Yeah, like I could play this kicked next turn, but it doesn't seem super necessary. I think we just kill Innkeeper before they draw any additional cards. Our biggest enemy here is probably like Lucky Clover into Brazen Borrower, bouncing multiple creatures. Outside of Brazen Borrower, the adventure decks typically don't have a lot of answers to large creatures that keep on growing. And yeah, the Bone Crusher just looks pretty small compared to our creatures. So, put counter on the token attack with all and our opponent has to chump or trade at least goes down to one play ooze and uh, yeah I'm not sure how they get out of this and in fact they don't sweet on to the next one all right we're on the draw with uh, solid looking hands Three lands thanks to the symbiosis. Facing a turn one rune crab. So we're hoping to draw scavenging ooze at some points. Do I play Shambler here? I think I still do. There's an argument for like saving it until after we play Mentor, so it enters the battlefield with an additional counter. But we can also just tap it to get two counters right away. So a blue-green ramp slash mill deck. We'll attack. If they block, I can inscription. Although I would rather just play Mentor, so I'm happy they took the one damage. Uro. Sadly, don't have Us this time to exile it. One ooze in the graveyard, another inscription. So this turn, I probably want to play another mentor and then activate Chambler. And then I can still attack with mentor first. If they block, I can inscription, opponent takes it. And I should probably activate this now, in case they try to kill one of my mentors in response. Second Ruin Crab into Cultivate, alright. The mill is starting to add up, although we do have inscriptions so we can kill both crabs next turn if we really want to. So down to 26 cards, opponent has two cards in hand. Alright, I think I just take another three. Or do I? If I play Temple of Plenty this turn, next turn I could play this and then play this kicked. Yeah, I guess that's worth it, I don't need to cast both inscriptions here. Uh, so we'll attack first with everyone. Or do I leave the Shambler back? I think the Shambler can attack. Opponent takes it. Could also just play a 3 3 Stone Cold then. The Scry doesn't matter. Land, sure.
And then next turn I can play Kicked Inscription. 25 cards remain. So it's unlikely that they can mill me out completely. Although they're definitely gonna get close. If they have another Cultivate, they could put me down to one card. They can stomp one of my two Mentors. Alright, so I should probably just kill both Cramps here. I have six cards remaining. Yeah, that seems like a good idea. So I think I should just move to combat, attack with everyone, and take it from there. Because they could also potentially die if I just put six counters on the Serpent here. So currently they're taking seven. And we'll put two counters here. And we'll put two counters here. And that should do it. Alright. Close game here. Almost got milled out by the Ruin Crabs. But we managed to get just enough damage in. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with uh, keepable hands. Nothing super exciting, but can't really mulligan. Facing Lurus of the Dream Den, Red Black. Ragdos didn't really get great mana fixing this time around. So making a two color aggressive Ragdos deck has been challenging for me. But a uh, Temple, I guess, helps out a little bit. There's the blue red pathway, so maybe a Grixis deck. Just play 2 2 Stone Coil. Opponent can't have Bonecrusher Giant in their deck because of Lurs as companions, so that's not really a card I'm concerned with. They discarded Village Rites. So maybe some sort of a Grixis Sacrifice deck. Claim the Firstborn plus Village Rites here is going to be pretty effective. Yep, that's too bad. Magmatic Channeler, already a 4-4. And a Thirst Kill Stone Coil. Sadly, it's not actually a 3-drop. So best I can do is play Lieutenant and then next turn maybe try and fight the Channeler. Scavenging Ooze is good too, although there's only my own creatures in the graveyard. I think I should still play Lieutenant here since it lines up better with uh, the Abundance next turn. But I can still play Symbiosis as an extra green source to exile two creatures with Ooze. And then Ooze is also going to be useful to find Lurus getting stuff back from the graveyard. Opponent discarded another claim the firstborn, exiles mauling and predation, so they can kill my lieutenant sadly. Wildwood Scourge. So I can kick inscription, but it's just gonna result in a trade. Which isn't amazing here. I can play Ooze, exile two things. Or I can just play a 4-4 Scourge and then hope they don't have another Thirst, which is another great answer to all my X creatures. And then uh, next turn maybe fight with the Inscription. I think I'm supposed to hang on to the Ooze for a bit longer. So let's take 3 damage. Play a 4-4. Four, four. 
Yeah, we're seeing a bit of the drawback of playing cards like Scourge and Stonecoil when it comes to Bloodchief's Thirst. And Claim the Firstborn as well. Agonizing Remorse. Takes my hench most likely if they can't remove the Wildwood Scourge. So there goes my card advantage. Channeler discards Call of the Death Dweller since they didn't have any creatures to get back. And what did they exile? Just two lands. And they put Lurus in hand. Alright, so I can use the inscription with Kicker now. Although they will be able to play Lurus and then get Channeler back. So I guess I'm still better off just playing the Ooze first. And then... No creatures in their graveyard to exile. Just exile Stone Coil. And exile... Another Stone Coil, and then we'll keep one green mana untapped here, so we can potentially fight at instant speed. Thrill discarding Heartless Act, which, yeah, it's pretty awkward against our deck since all our creatures have plus one plus one counters on them. Three unknown cards in hand. But they kind of need to remove two creatures here. Another Magmatic Channeler, sure. End of turn, just exile another creature. With 11 instants and sorceries, it's going to be very difficult to shrink the channelers down to 1-3s again. They do seem to be holding some instant speed interaction, but I'm not sure what kind of interaction it is. But I guess I can just attack with both Ooze and Scourge and see what happens. I could even attack with a Knight token as well, especially now with Fortification. Yeah, I don't really feel like playing this kicked into two open mana. But if they had nothing, we definitely could have gone for the kill here. Alright, double chumps. That's fine by me. Don't really need to respond. And a village right sacrificing their own creature, fair enough. So... That happens. And they drew into another village rights. Nope, they're just activating Channeler. Which finds Vessel, but they can't play that instant speed here. So they were digging for maybe another village rights. And then... I guess I don't have to exile the Channelers now, I can wait. If they play Lurs, I can respond. Stormcaller. Okay, if they have a removal spell here, that could be bad. It's gonna be Heartless Act, just to remove some counters. That's not too bad. So yeah, imagine if my opponent had Eliminate here instead. Although then again, Bloodchief's Thirst kind of took over the spot of Eliminate, so it makes sense to have Heartless Act instead. So yeah, that happens. Place Archfiend's Vessel, so... They seem pretty dead to me. 
Let's exile some creatures. And our opponent scoops it up. All right. Could use the inscription with kicker, get rid of a blocker, and attack for the win. So yeah, our opponent had a great start with the Thirst and then the Claim plus Village Rides play. But then later in the game, they couldn't find another copy of Thirst, and instead they just found Heartless Act, which lined up pretty awkwardly here. So it just goes to show that the different removal spell choices definitely have big ramifications. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a decent looking hand. Probably want to save Stone Coil until after we play Conclave Mentor. Let's see what we're up against. Turn 1, Rogrin Triumph. So this is probably the 4-color Omnath deck, if I had to guess. So, yeah, I probably just want to play the Mentor now. Could get stomped by Bone Crusher, which I guess is the downside here. But playing Ooze is kind of unexciting. And if I play Mentor now, next turn I can go Shambler plus something else. Just a tap lands. Yeah, we'll go Shambler plus 2-2 two -two Serpent, I think. Could have also played both Serpents as 2-2s two instead of making a 3-3. Three -three. But if they do play Lotus Cobra, I want to have a 3-3 three -three so I can use my Inscription to fight without losing my creature. Opponent still nothing. They don't have double white yet, so I don't know if I need to expect Shattered Sky. So if this grows, it grows up to a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, I guess we'll just play a 3-3 three, three Stone Coil and then hope they don't have a Shatter. And keep up the pressure. Just an island. Felidar retreats. All right. Is my opponent just dead here? I think so. Plus, we still have the inscription in case my math is off. So, yeah, the opponent's not impacting the board here. Didn't really work out for them. Our deck is definitely capable of applying a lot of early pressure and punish slow starts. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. No green mana means we get a mulligan. This I can try. It's not great with only one creature here, not close to casting Henge. Probably bottom an inscription. Turn to Lotus Cobra. So, not going to be able to kill the Lotus Cobra anytime soon. Don't really want a two for one myself with the inscription. Alright, a 4 4 gem razor, that's not too bad. So this could be like a red-green landfall aggro deck, which uses mutate creatures to put on top of some of the cheaper landfall creatures. One or visionary. Into scavenging ooze, so we're gonna have to fight over the graveyards. All right, Aspirant was an excellent draw. So now I can go Aspirant, put counter on Ooze, and then Ooze can fight the Cobra. Is that what we want to do? I would miss out on the creature in the graveyard since they will be able to eat it with their Ooze. So maybe I should just go Scourge for one into Aspirant this turn and then next turn maybe fight 
And we can maybe even uh, kick the inscription. It's also an argument for putting the counter on the Aspirant itself, but I think the Aspirant's more valuable than the Ooze here. So I would rather spread out the counter. And if the Aspirant survives, it's gonna generate a ton of counters with double Scourge in play. Ancient Green Warden. Alright. That's a scary card for sure. Take four. Stone Coil. So is there any way for me to play Great Henge this turn? I don't think there is. Put counter on Ooze, that's four. Still one mana short. If I play Stone Coil, it just grows the Scourge by one. So... We'll grow the ooze. And then don't really have any great attacks. Probably just play Stone Quill for four instead of keeping up Inscription. And then next turn I'll be able to play Henge. Or I could wait and then this will eventually grow into 5-5. Five five. I can play Henge and Stone Quill in the same turn. But I could also go Henge plus Inscription in the same turn. So I think I'm okay playing this. And just passing. Alright, opponent stomps the Aspirants. They can eat it with Ooze. They have their own Auron Reef Ooze, okay. They still have the mana from Visionary to activate their Scavenging Ooze. And they are empty-handed, so... I think we're doing okay here. They don't really have any source of card advantage. And we've got a nice board presence to play defense, so they don't have any amazing attacks. And now we've got a great hench, and they don't. And this turn can go hench into Aspirant, sadly. Aspirant can put a counter on one of my creatures, grow the Scourge up to 6. But then I wouldn't be able to play Hench, so I think we just play Hench this turn and... ...probably pass. And keep up Inscription. Clothis doesn't do much with Scavenging Ooze in play, but I guess it's an indestructible 4-5. Alright, don't really need to fight anything at the moment. Probably keep that one in hand as a trick. Ooh, nice. Perfect, another inscription. Put counter on... Maybe Stone Coil. And we're pretty close to turning the corner. This can also gain me a ton of life. Alright, they've got their own Great Hench, that's fair enough. Yeah, the Inscription gaining life with the Tantan Scourge in play is pretty nice. But I think we're still ahead. So, and the opponent concedes, they're just too far behind to this Conclave Mentor and Double Hydra that will keep on growing and Red-Green's not gonna have any easy time killing them. Sweet. Alright, so we got to see the deck in action in a variety of matchups and I've got to say I'm pretty impressed by the results. The deck has a ton of individually powerful cards, but the cards also have great synergy together, so it's definitely more than a sum of its parts. And then the addition of Inscription as this instant speed removal spell with a ton of additional utility has been very nice as well. 
Overall, the worst matchups for this deck are probably going to be sweeper-heavy decks or ramp decks that can ramp into Ugin the Spirit Dragon, since it's pretty difficult to recover from Ugin's minus X ability unless we've got a giant Stone Quill Serpent in play. So not the best at dealing with a turn to Lotus Cobra, since we need to have a creature in play already that can fight the Cobra, and most of our early creatures are just going to trade with the Cobra if we end up fighting with the Inscription. So a turn to Lotus Cobra can be hard to beat as well. So it might not be the best positioned against the current 4-color Omnath metagame, but against everything else, the deck's been pretty good. I've also tried an Abzan version of this deck in the early Axis event, splashing black mostly for Grackmaw, the 3-drop, and then for Pelucranos, which can also punish mill decks like the Rune Crab decks or the Blue Black Rogue decks, as you get to escape it from the graveyard. Although it is funny that both of those creatures are Hydras, so they don't have the best synergy with Wildwood Scourge, which only grows if a non-Hydra creature picks up a plus one plus one counter, so that's just something to keep in mind. And the mana base can definitely support adding black, since we get access to a Triome and an additional pathway. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.